Good morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Ringler School. I'm going to do something that I don't normally seem to be able to do. I'm actually going to fulfill a video subject that I said I was going to do. Uh, the last video I just did, which was postman, policeman, or bemused bystander, uh, I said I was going to try to make a series of videos before I went up the mountain here in, in three or four days uh, to Idaho, talking about gear and tack. And so I'm gonna do the first one today, I'm gonna talk about tack and then about what personally I'm gonna have on and what I'm taking and wearing. Then we'll do one on the bed roll and the bedding, and then I'll do one on the actual what's in the bag about uh, clothing and gear and stuff like that. Now, if you're going in the mountains, horseback in the mountains for an extended period of time, the odds are that you're in one of two situations, all right? One, you're signed on with a outfitter, all right? So you're going to be using his stock, his horses, his mules, his idols, his tack, and all that. <clears throat> so you need to have a real clear line of communication open with your outfitter, about what he's providing and what you need to bring. So if you're going with an outfitter, most of this you probably won't need. A, a, there's a couple of things you might say, okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, but if you're going up on your own, uh, taking your own stock and your own gear, um, there may be some points here. There, There's like so much in my videos, regardless of subjects, there very rarely is there, this is the way it has to be done. All right, this is just, Here's some things, this is what I have found works for me. And so it's just information and you take and pick and choose like a buffet, uh, what works for you and what doesn't, okay? Now, uh, starting with myself, um, I'm going up there and I will be there, I don't know how long the weather's gonna change. And so I'm taking a little bit more because I'll be staying at the lodge, going up for a week at a time, coming back, and I don't know. Um, but you know, a man in the outdoors uh, is like a house. As long as he has a good roof and a good foundation, uh, he can last a long time. And so we'll start, the hat is is the, uh, you guys, if you've been on here, you're familiar, it's the Rand's Custom Hatters uh, that they made for me. Uh, it's a 100% beaver hat, sheds the water good. Uh, you need to wear some kind of hat. You'll lose a lot of your heat out of the top of your head um, especially if you get wet. Um, so you, you need, you need a respectable, uh, lid of some sort. Okay. Uh, and this is what I have. And the other thing is on my feet. Now your boots are incredibly important. All right. Now these are whites. These are whites, Packers or cowboy boots. They got the riding heel, the rounded toe to go on the stirrup. Uh, but they lace up, which is good. They provide good ankle support in steep country on when you're on the ground a lot. Um, and uh, so I will be taking these. Uh, I have another pair of boots that I'm going to be taking. They're Schnee's, um, made in Montana. And they've got, um, they're waterproof and they've got Fensilate for when the weather turns off bad. I'll bring them out in, a, in another video. I'm just wearing, I'm a Wrangler's guy. Now, a lot of guys these days, there's all kinds of synthetic waterproof hunting camouflage gear um and uh, and then there's wool of course wool is is you know it's the top of the heap uh, but i'm just taking jeans i'm gonna have good merino wool long johns for when it turns off cold i've got good wool socks uh, of course you guys know me i'll have my vest um i will be taking a firearm um and you know, I wrestle with this back and forth and I, I've, I've decided I'm just, for a sidearm, I'm just gonna carry my 1911. Uh, I've just decided as I get older, you know, I get a little more plush in places. We kind of tend to fill out a little bit, but I still, I still have, I don't have a butt and I got bony hip bones and uh, just cartridge belts and stuff anymore. They're just, they're just not comfortable. Now, Jesse, he carries a 44 mag and a cross draw right here, and that's great. But And if I was in Alaska, if I was going to Alaska or, or certain places down here, I'd have something a little more substantial. But there's no apex predators. 
uh, up there, some small black bear, whatever. And I just, I don't go unarmed, so I'm just taking just a full-size government, 5-inch 1911. Uh, and then, <clears throat> so I, it's lightweight, it's close to the body. I don't have to worry about it, okay? Um, and always going to have a knife up there. Now, I had a fella make this knife and send it to me. It's Fire Creek Forge out of Texas. And he sent it to me and said to try it out. And it's good steel, Coco Bolo handle. And, but the design is just super handy. Uh, so for a, for a horseman knife, for a ranch and backcountry knife, um, it's, it's turned out. So I've got that and just the spare mag. So we'll talk about my saddle. Now I'll try to cover everything um, that I, I can think of that might be necessary. Now I've got a tack room full of saddles, okay? And I chose this saddle. This saddle, um, this is a hardwood, hardwood saddlery uh, out of uh, out of Shelly, Idaho, right? Yeah, uh, this is not actually made by Dale. I think Dale had a separate shop. Um, but this this saddle is incredibly comfortable. And so I'm going to take this saddle instead of the Bob Ray that I normally ride. Now, there's, my wife asked me, she said, why are you taking that saddle instead of your other one? Well, number one, this saddle is weighs quite a bit less, even with all the gear on it, because I'd have to put all the gear on the other one, so it's lighter. Uh, second, it's full rough out, and so in the back country, you're going to get a lot more rough uh, tree limbs and scratches and pulling off and throwing it over logs and rain and snow and everything. And this is not going to, this rough out is not going to show the abuse like that nice uh, hand carved, hand stamped Bob Ray. Uh, the other thing is, is my mule, Reba, has been up there for several weeks with Jesse getting some miles and experience on her. So I'm going to be riding Reba. Uh, and I've ridden her in this saddle and I know this saddle fits her really well. So that would just kind of finished it off. So I'm going to be taking this saddle. Uh, on the back, I've got saddle bags. These are, these are bigger than I normally on daily use. These are triple K cavalry saddle bags. Um, and so I'll have them. Um, my rain slicker. Now the rain slicker for years, this is a Wyoming traders for years. I've done the Australian outback, but I got one of these this summer. And I got it in an extra size too big uh, to put over a jacket. And it, this thing has turned out, it's lighter than uh, the oil skin slicker. It doesn't weigh as much. It sheds water better. It's actually, I guess that's vinyl, waterproof. I've never had an Australian Outback slicker that didn't eventually leak through in, uh, in heavy, long sustained heavy downpours. And uh, so it's just, I really liked it. So I decided I'm gonna take this. Um, I'm, uh, since I'm riding a mule, I'm taking a crouper. Now, for those who don't know, if you can look here, Shelby, can you see that? This saddle has a ring built on the back of it. Now, a crouper hooks into that ring and goes back and goes under the horse's tail, or under the mule's tail. Mules are not built like horses. They don't have the withers. They don't have the sloping shoulders like a horse. So you, they, you do a crouper or a britching for steep downhill to keep that saddle for sliding, from sliding forward. So I'll be taking that along. Uh, let's see, I double check my stirrups. Uh, I got a wide set of brass monels. Those sneeze packers are gonna be pretty wide. And so I wanna make sure I got a pair of stirrups that's gonna be wide enough um, for me to comfortably and safely put a bigger boot in all right so everything has a purpose everything has a reason um i know it's a big thing you know it's the ubiquitous water bottles today i don't like carrying plastic water bottles okay um you know you buy them 24 pack at walmart and that's what a lot of people take I, I don't prefer to do that i don't like digging in my saddlebags for stuff when i'm on the trail if i don't have to especially if i'm leading a pack string and whatnot and it's just more trash to haul out. Um, it's just more stuff. And so I found a canteen. Uh, I mean, you, canteens are easy to find, uh, but they're plastic. And I actually found a stainless steel canteen that was wrapped in leather. So that's what, 
our first ride, all right, this, when we leave the lodge, we have to swim the horses and mules across the river and we take a boat across. It's a pretty substantial um, Russian river uh, with big rocks in it. And so we, so we swim the river and then we resaddle and load up all the horses and mules and we go 14 miles down the trail down the river. And we get to a spot 14 miles down the river, we have to unsaddle everything and swim them, the boat will come down and meet us and we have to swim back across the river. Okay, so we swim back across the river. I don't swim, I ride the boat, all right? But the horses and mules swim the river and then we load everything up, saddle everything back up, put all the packs and gear back on and then we go another three mile uh, up the trail to camp. So it's 17 miles swimming the river twice. So it's gonna be a long, long day. Um, so anyhow, I don't, I don't know what point I was trying to make with that, but you want to have your good gear and you want to have it ready. We're not, it's, it's not a hour trail ride through a cornfield in Flatland, Iowa. Okay. Uh, so it's important that things fit and that things work right. Okay, Shelby, if you want to come around here, I feel like I'm maybe forgetting something. I don't know. Uh, there, there is obviously there's a saddle rifle. Um, now I carry, I've got a couple videos on this. I think maybe one of them got deleted. I lost some, some, uh, some stuff that I had first did. Um, I'm, I'm carrying my rifle. I carry it forward and, uh, on the off side. The reason I carry it on the off side is because when I go to get on this side and I go to mount the horse, this helps balance that out. If I had this rifle hanging on the other side, and then I go to get on, there's all that extra weight trying to pull that saddle on my mule, my horse as I get on. Um, in this country, I carry my rifle, what's called Northwest, which is forward and down, um, because there's a lot of steep uphill country. And if you do Southwest, which is back forward, you're more likely to lose your rifle. I like to have it up here. I like to have it where I can uh, see it, keep an eye on it. Um, you want to position it to where it's comfortable behind your leg, all right? And where it's not in the way of the horse stepping forward with their back leg or in the way of their neck here. Now you guys are all just chomping at the bit doing what is what is the rifle. You know, I, I went in the other day on the, way to, on the way to Kentucky and I was in Nebraska and I stopped in the back, side of Nebraska back there at this little way station. I went in to get a sandwich and they had sporting goods in there. Uh, and they had probably the best dang selection of lever guns I've run into. And uh, and they had this there and I couldn't turn it down. Uh, so I left there with a rifle and no sandwich. I had to go down the road and find me another sandwich later. But this is a, this is a Marlin SBL, stainless, big loop, big lever, uh, 4570. And uh, so uh, they're hard to come by, they're hard to find and they had it there and they had it at a real good price. And so I picked it up. So this is what I'm taking with me. Um, this lever action 4570, it's got, uh, it's got the ghost ring sights. I'm not gonna put a scope on it at this time. And, uh, but that's, uh, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm carrying up, okay? And I was real happy. I, lever action 4570s, I've killed, uh, of course, I spent years in Alaska, and I've taken grizzly, I've taken moose, uh, I've taken caribou, uh, I've taken a lot with them. And uh, the last one I had, uh, I wound up in a difficult place, and I sold it. It was actually a Marlin, a, an original JM stamped Marlin, if you know what that means, that had been fully tricked out by Wild West guns. And it was a lot like this one. And I hadn't picked up another one because I couldn't find another one that had what I wanted in it. So let me throw this in there. All right, there's always little extra bits, of tidbits here, okay? If you go to get a lever action Marlin rifle of whatever caliber, the original Marlins were excellent, excellent firearms. And the serial number will be stamped JM and then the number, like 38068 or whatever, but they're JM stamped. That's the original Marlin, that's a good one. Marlin then sold out to Remington. 
at Remington put out garbage. All right, we call them Remlins, Remington Marlins, and they were just way more of them were junk than was good, and they went bankrupt. And then Ruger has recently bought them out, so Ruger is now making them. And of course, Ruger makes excellent, um, excellent firearms. So if you get a, le I'm just throwing this out there, especially if used. If you get a lever action Marlin of any caliber, make sure it's not one made by Remington. Get a newer one that's now made by Ruger or get one that is stamped JM in the serial number and then you know you got original. Okay, I throw that in there. That's free. All right. Um, so, so that's it. I mean, that's the basic gear. That That's what I'm taking up. And, uh, and so, I'll, like I said, I'll do another video here. I don't know in the next day or two and uh, we'll we'll get the uh, the bed roll out and we'll talk about the lodging we're going to do for a week while we're up there and then I'll actually have my duffel bag what I'm carried up and I think there's going to be some pretty good information in there not so much information on what to take but information on what not to take okay uh, so anyhow short and to the point but uh, I uh, I hope this helps you. We'll catch you guys next time.